So good afternoon, everybody. I'm very happy to greet everybody on behalf of Zagreb-based Ayush Sales of the in the uh, Indian Embassy in Croatia uh, for this beautiful session webinar session with the topic Health and Well-being Programs for All from the Ministry of Ayush, and we are very happy to have our guest and speaker, uh, our dear Dr. Ishwar Basavaradi, and he is a noted yoga scientist and philosopher and serving as a director of Moraja Desai National Institute of Yoga under Ministry of Ayush Government of India since 2005. And I'm very happy that I met uh, 2010, Dr. Ishwar Basavaradi in the Moraja Desai National Institute of Yoga. And I witnessed his expertise and uh, great organizing power, such a great institution and holding many national yoga congresses which uh, uh, such harmonious uh, way, keeping yoga alive in India. And finally, uh, helping that the Raja Desai, the National Institute of Yoga grows to the level of the Ministry of Ayush. And uh, also, he is uh, the head of the Yoga Certification Board under the Ayush Ministry of Head of the World Health Organization for Traditional Medicine since 2013. And uh, he has more than 30, 30, 33 years of rich experience in yoga teaching, training, therapy and research. And he was advisor of yoga and naturopathy at the Ministry of Ayush and has had additional charge of director of uh, CCRUN in the past. And he also wrote many research papers, books and monographs. And uh, so Dr. Ishwar Basavaradi was being the instrumental in introducing 159 district yoga wellness centers for advanced yoga therapy and research centers in India and uh, some medical institutions four yoga therapy centers and, um, uh, and many more uh, different programs he developed. And uh, also one very uh, interesting uh, development is that he um, created the um, uh, World Health Organization and yoga and, uh, and why break mobile applications uh, for, the, for the health and the wellness sector. And uh, so there is a long list of his achievements. And uh, now I would like to ask uh, our dear uh, ambassador of India in Croatia, um, His Excellency Raj Kumar Srivastava to address our guest. And then uh, we enjoy his blessings and his speech. Good afternoon to you all. Uh, thank you, Yogacharya Miklitz, uh, uh, Dr. Ishwar Basavreddy. Good to see you. Uh, we have been in touch for some time now, and uh, it's good to see you uh, directly connected, uh, even though virtually, but addressing the Croatian audience. Uh, we have just finished a wonderful uh, yoga day celebration in the month of June, between 1st and 21st of June in Croatia symbolizing 75 years of India's independence, 75 events all across Croatia. And that was first time that we could do it uh, in such a large uh, geographical expanse in Croatia. Uh, in all, probably 10 odd islands of Croatia also hosted these events out of 75, 10 were in the islands. As you know that Croatia has almost same number of islands as India has, uh, close to 1250 even though India is uh, 300 times in population and 60 times in area, but islands wise, Croatia and India are same. So we could do some of the yoga day celebrations in the islands like Korchula, Vis Island, and Kirk Island. And I think there is general uh, awareness, not only among the people, but also now the administrators and the policy makers in those cities and towns that these activities are for the benefit of the people, uh, not only at the individual level, but also at the level of society. 
and that is what uh, is uh, pushing this uh, interest uh, further to new areas. Uh, and we have, I think, close to 120 yoga uh, studios in Croatia. So some of those teachers have been the key uh, like stakeholders in organizing these events. So I think it will be nice to hear uh, somebody like you who has devoted whole life into yoga uh, as a scientist, as uh, uh, Yogacharya Miklet said, uh, that means applying the new principles of the way the Western world sees any scientific discipline so that uh, it does not just look like something esoteric, but actually something which is very useful and scientifically proven. Uh, basically, the, as we say, physics and metaphysics, there is a very thin line where they cross and we should be knowledgeable enough to know that uh, there is no barrier actually, there is a continuum. It just depends upon your perspective that how far you can see. Uh, and in that sense, I think your efforts at the Muraji Desai Yuga Institute have been uh, exemplary. You have done this for a long time. Uh, and uh, since the time we have declared, uh, like UN has declared uh, 21st of June as the IDY, International Day of Yoga, I think this is becoming a very, very uh, useful uh, exercise that you have done over the past many years. So we would be very happy to hear how the Institute has evolved, as well as some of the opportunities for Croatian yoga enthusiasts, not only just the people who do yoga, but also those who want to take it as a profession, as a teacher or as a yoga uh, studio owners so how what can they do in terms of in cooperation with let's say uh, Muraji Desai Institute of Yoga and many other branches that you have now established at different states levels so that the bouquet of option is much wider in India today than what it used to be in terms of where they can learn further and also just uh, enjoy the process thank you so much and look forward to hear you Yeah. Um, am I audible now? Hello? Am I audible? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, shall I start my speech? Yes, yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Only one minute, I will adjust myself. Yes, thank you. Om Shanti 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 He is a excellency, most respected uh, Ambassador of India to Croatia, respected uh, Rajkumar Srivastavji, my esteemed friend and uh, very renowned Yoga Acharya, Sri Jadanko Miklik, and uh, my brothers and sisters of, who are practicing yoga and attending this. Uh, webinar through various social media platforms. Uh, my pronouns to you all. Good evening to you all. <clears throat> At the outset, uh, I take this opportunity to thank uh, <clears throat> uh, particularly the Embassy of India and uh, my friend Ajay Danko to uh, giving me an opportunity to share some of my views on uh, the importance of yoga in health and well-being and the, how yoga can be uh, promoted in Croatia by uh, taking the various uh, uh, benefits and various uh, uh, initiatives taken by the government of India to promote yoga globally. 
and also particularly as uh, uh, mentioned by the uh, uh, honorable ambassador sir that uh, uh, how certification could help uh, the indian brand and its uh, uh, sanctity across the globe so i will mention it uh, at the end with these uh, few introductory remarks uh, i congratulate the the embassy of uh, india and croatia and all the yoga organizations who are uh, very ably conducted more than 75 programs i saw the this this was the first country abroad we have started uh, 75 uh, places celebration of pi divine 75 places island as mentioned and that has been inspired many other countries so india this time we also did with 75 iconic places and it's a huge uh, uh, gathering and uh, participation by the various stakeholders and the uh, various parts of the country and especially the guardian ring is a very huge success with the participation of uh, global community so i once again uh, uh, congratulate and thank the ambassador and the uh, yoga organizations particularly my friend yadanko for all these initiatives because uh, yoga is uh, uh, beyond the boundaries it is for the entire humanity as uh, always emphasized by honorable prime minister sri narendra modi ji yoga is a global phenomenon though it is uh, having the its origin in india now it is just like a science any science it is for the entire humanity and it it should become our culture so culture is not uh, just confined to any region religion or gender it is geographical the whole the world as a one family what the our philosophy says the vasudeva kutumbakam the whole world is one family so yoga should become a culture which can unite all of us and it is uh, the human values which are in great need are intact and it will serve for the uh, health and well being of the entire global population with these few words and let me see today i would like to emphasize uh, in three phases first of all uh, the basic tenets of yoga so then uh, i will definitely emphasize on uh, the concepts of yoga practices of yoga for health and well being the scientific uh, research is on each of these practices then uh, at the end how the creation uh, yoga teachers can be certified and how they can be benefited by some of these schemes as proposed by the government of india through yoga certification board so uh, let me say that uh, this is a uh, honorable prime minister when he proposed uh, in the united nation at um, general assembly on 27 september 2014 said yoga is an invaluable gift of ancient indian tradition it embodied unity of mind and body thought and action restrain and fulfillment harmony between man and nature and a holistic approach to health and well being which is uh, endorsed by more than 177 countries now you can see the the entire nature of yoga it is uh, for harmony it brings harmony in all walks of life and thus from the ancient time it has a history of more than 5000 years from the ancient time it is known for the as a preventive medicine for the disease prevention whoever practice yoga uh, he can or she can prevent any kind of disease one then it is for the health promotion so the man has uh, several potential so to extract and to improvise to the human inner inherent potential yoga comes to the rescue yoga has the method and technology therefore it is being used from ancient time for health promotion and in the recent past uh, Uh, especially the lifestyle disorders the non communicable diseases stress and its consequences are 
have become a global phenomena. So in that case, uh, uh, the recent modern medical fraternity is using uh, yoga as an adjunctive therapy or complementary or independent uh, therapy in the management of many of the lifestyle disorders. What I would like to say, there are three important uh, applications of yoga. One is uh, for personal fitness or uh, if you do yoga regularly, we can keep fit ourselves and healthy, prevent many of the diseases. And uh, if you do regularly the higher dimensions of yoga under the able guidance of a teacher, so we can definitely promote our health. And uh, uh, third important aspect is in the management of the many of the non-communicable diseases, yoga comes to our rescue. So what are the silent points? I emphasize these are the six silent points of yoga to our practice of yoga. So the first one is always I emphasize it, it is essentially spiritual. The definition of spiritual in a global phenomenon is deeper, but simple definition of spirituality is to know myself, what I am, what is my true nature. The journey to understand my true nature is the spiritual journey. So if it is presented in a rational form, and that is called the philosophy, the analytical thinking, so the, the Indian philosophers go beyond the experience, not only thinking, they presented, they are called darshana. So then if you see the thing, it is empirical, but it goes beyond, it is experiential science. It is subtle science which can be not only empirical, but it is experiential. One, these three, the spirit, the philosophy and science are integrated that become an art of healthy living. So this art of healthy living brings harmony in all works of life. How it brings, it brings with the management of mind. Mind management is the most key factor in bringing the harmony because what we think that we are. Therefore, yoga is basically for the mind management so that has been envisaged in our traditional yoga text. So what is the purpose of yoga? The man wants always the happiness. No one wants the suffering. Therefore, suffering is a fact, but we are having hard for the happiness. Therefore, the Sankhya, the ancient uh, text of yoga, identify three kinds of sufferings. The, so one is the... the the material and under the psychological, third one is the spiritual dimension. So one has to overcome all these three, so then we can live a happy life, antetika, permanently. The whole yoga philosophy, the yoga practices are help us to overcome the suffering or the dukkha or the pain, what the mankind is suffering and we have to overcome. The purpose of yoga is that, not only disease prevention, or for only for that. It can be achieved only with the freedom that is called the moksha or liberation. So for that in Ayurveda, we have a three dimension. One is the food, the ahara. Second one is the sleep. Third one is the celebrity. So these are the things that the control over our senses or the, especially the, uh, the brahmacharya. Therefore, the ahara, the food, the nidra, the sleep are vital importance in always going for the higher dimensions. So therefore, the celibacy, the diet and sleep, it is mentioned in the Ayurveda Shastra, are the three pillars of health. Therefore, in Indian tradition, the, where the Ayurveda is called Indian medicine and medicine system, they are first of all take these three and emphasize on these things. So, with these primary, first we take care of our the diet, the sleep, and the celibacy. Then we come to the practice of yoga to follow. And from the ancient time, there are different traditions. The tradition of Vedanta, where it has mentioned about Jnana Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga. So you can see these kinds of yoga in the Vedanta tradition. Then it comes to the yoga of Patanjali, which is based on the Sankhya philosophy. That is Sankhya Yoga tradition, Patanjala Yoga. Then we have a Trantric tradition, Hatha Yoga, Kundalini Yoga, Laya Yoga, various Hatha Yoga traditions are there. 
and practices are being widely used in the present day or from the tantric tradition and some people mention only the hatha yoga but they are tantra practices so then there are some of the other traditions like buddha tradition or bodha yoga jaina tradition and uh, many other uh, uh, traditions are sufi traditions there are many of other religions also practicing yoga for the uh, ultimate goal of life so now with this background various traditions from last more than 3 5000 years here so how what are the concept we are talking we said that the man is the bond of the uh, five seeds the human being is a made up of five sheets the first one is the physical body what we call then there is a pranic body the vital force then there is a mind or thoughts and emotions manomaya ko then the wisdom the balance of mind so the discrimination power that is called vijnanamaya ko the ultimately the harmony the expanded awareness the bliss which is called anandamaya kosha i am the kosha of five koshas this pancha kosha concept has been mentioned in the indian upanishads called taitrayi upanishads so on this one we provide yoga therapy and management of mind and to mind the disease so patanjali emphasized the eight fold path yama niyama asana pranayama pratyahara dharana dhyana samadhi so the eight limbs path or self transcendental path mentioned by the patanjali then he mentioned about the five kleshas that is ignorance avidya or the ignorance is the root cause of all suffering then there is an ego then attachment aversion and clinging to the life these are the five infections and they are the five blockages always in the path of health and well being therefore these klesha start to be reduced or they to be removed so to understand that we have to see there are three gunas there is a sattva guna rajo guna and tamo guna sattva is the pure illuminating and uh, the rajo is the always it is in motion tamo is always the the inertia the matter is the tamas therefore so that these three gunas from the tamasic state we have to move to the sattvic state illuminating phase so for that one we have to balance the five doshas are in the body the sorry the three doshas vata pitta kapha which in the form of five mahabhutas the ether air fire water and earth so these are all the fundamental principles or the concept we have to take into consideration while practicing yoga so then this uh, the physical body has the dhatus there are sapta dhatu the seven kinds of dhatus in the body so that also to be balanced so then in that case one it is called the the gunas then the pancha mahabhutas and all these thing then we come to the chakras they are mooladhara swadhisthana manipura uh, anahata vishuddha ajna so this is the way how yoga goes so one it is the physical body when it comes vata pitta kapha tridosha balance then we have to balance the energy the energy in the different uh, psychic centers through the spinal cord so that can be once it is balanced there are five pranas the energy is dependent into distributed into the five para transformed to the various body parts that is called prana apana udana yana and samana and each prana has a specific duty and responsibilities affecting the various functions of the body i mentioned in my slide i am giving the very scientific approach of our ancient knowledge so like this the first the gross body has taken care of now the pranic body the energy body the vital body and its various functions has been taken care of so how it can taken care of it's only through different uh, breathing that's a alternative nostril breathing the left nostril and right nostril and the central one it is called shushumna there are various techniques so then while doing this we face certain type of obstacles 
there is a disease and other things they are called antarayas so i will not go into the details these antarayas are suffering and the uh, disturbance of the mind and the weakness of the body and there is a disturbance in the uh, dominance of the nostrils so the breathing is uh, irregular that is the indication of the the mental imbalance then yoga comes into the rescue so with this one what i mentioned the first one is that how the physical body has taken care of with uh, uh, vata pitta kapha and panch mahabhutas then into enter into the the vital body the chakras the prana nadi and the psychology the mind thoughts and emotions so therefore i taken health in the who it is state of complete physical mental and social well being not near the absence of disease or infirmity as the doctor quoted but in yoga it is complete cessation of all kinds of suffering and its root cause i mentioned you the one of the kleshas ignorance and harmony in all walks of life it's most important so that harmony not only the the body functioning but the entire thing the mind the emotions the the discrimination power and the essence the spirit and how you behave in the society as a man is a social animal so all these things it is an harmony this type of harmony the physical the vital psychological intellectual and spiritual well being and converted into social well being leads to a total freedom called liberation therefore in my opinion it's my statement according to yoga the health or uh, is i take it as it is a total freedom all kinds of sufferings total freedom all kinds of suffering i am living well in the society and contributing for the healthy society so that is i am living for the entire humanity what the theme of this year international deaf yoga proposed the honorable times of india so therefore the end of ignorance leads to the harmony that harmony leads to the freedom what is called moksha or kaivalya in the yogic terminology so then comes to the wellness or well being so there are six important dimensions of well being yoga helps in all physical well being various asanas kriyas pranayama the emotional well being the meditation and pranayama the intellectual well being the knowledge na jnana yoga the social well being karma yoga bhakti yoga occupational and spiritual well being and many of the yoga practices are taken care of the six dimensions of well being therefore well being is a way of living so i mention so once you are physical well being the food you have to take care of that food should be digested well it should be absorbed well it should be circulated well and it should be the waste product should be eliminated and a proper relaxation rest to all the organs including the the microcosm the cell so that is the way how yoga taken care of so yoga advise the proper diet so how to digest it properly convert into energy and transform this energy to the whole body and also the mind then the waste products and waste thoughts should be removed so that again for the next course i am ready with purity that's the way how yoga works so that is the the secret of wellness in india people follow without going to the school because it is the culture of india to live all these wellness principle are ingredient in our cultural practices now the third dimension i mentioned yoga as a therapy so where it stands for there are three important dimensions the metabolic uh, disorders like uh, any constipation or acidity etc the example of diabetes and many metabolic disorders nowadays so they can be effectively managed independently by the proper yoga protocol the psychological disorders there is no solution in the modern psychiatry or these things permanent solution but yoga has the research shows 
that is most importantly the stress and anxiety or the common factor no one can avoid but they can be managed well by the principle and practice of yoga inculcating in our day to day life third most aspect is the depression the one is and more than 18% of the population are suffering from various depression or uh, related disorders so yoga taking care of we have thousands of research papers on stress anxiety and depression and their management by the yoga and yoga practices world is uh, embracing the yoga because to overcome the stress anxiety and depression which is a global pandemic than the uh, covid now most importantly yoga is very very useful in the rehabilitation or give you the cardiac rehabilitation after the cardiac uh, operations are sent and all cardiac surgeons are recommending now the yoga practice especially the breathing meditation relaxation techniques are helpful same thing with the cancer rehabilitation in the covid 19 uh, uh, pandemic also yoga plays a vital role in the rehabilitation process what are the general benefits of yoga so it reduces the anxiety decrease the stress so curtail the depression so eliminate the hostility diminishes effects of trauma so then if you come to that improved attention okay so heightened mood and smooth mood in good mood condition supports concentration boosts memory and lower risk of uh, mental health conditions so these are the general benefits of yoga in the mental health so in globally yoga is being not only for the stress and uh, anxiety management but also for the mental health these are the benefits of uh, yoga in the management of mental health so now the second aspect i am coming to the practices the how yoga helps what are the fundamentals so yoga takes care of my body the yoga takes care of the balance of the energies in the body yoga takes care of my mental management mind management and yoga takes care of my intelligence and it is here yoga is contributing these four dimensions so to promotion but all depends upon the teacher the teacher is most important what an individual needs how much practice you need for the body the vital forces uh, how it can be balanced the mind management and also the discrimination power so always choosing the right things at the right time that is the intelligence how it works so in that case i have given you a wonderful slide it is patented slide that much of important so i am choosing this one slide i am preparing the models for the various yoga protocol i am preparing so i put forward three one is there are some pre conditions pre requisite conditions so whenever we go for operation the doctors take care of various some parameters the bp the, the blood samples the urine etc whether we can operate what are the group like this there are some pre requisites before we go any kind of yoga so then second aspect so the cleansing and the diet modification so whether the toxins are there there are some clinical practices in yoga and also we take care of the ayurveda the panchakarma practices the toxins removal of the toxins detoxification is vital importance then the third one is the practice what it contains so we may start with uh, more spend more time for the practice of asana in the beginning but you can see the three spheres the asana pranayama and dhyana i put dhyana in the bigger component we may start uh, spending more time in the beginning for asanas but ultimately when you do start yoga regularly the dhyana will be taking the larger part of our practice so this one the model the pre requisites and the detoxification and diet modification and the practice of yoga particularly asana pranayama and dhyana or uh, will take care of our health and well being which has been demonstrated with various research papers published for the yoga let us see these practices so how i follow i first of all when you come to me for fitness or wellness or any disorders 
I first take care of detoxification, the purification needed. Then I go for the diet modification. I choose right diet for you according to the season, according to your psychophysiological nature, according to your customs and uh, 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 other conditions. Then I choose the postural modification, some asanas, some breathing techniques, some relaxation. Then that leads to concentration, taking to the meditation. Once you start meditating, you start modifying your routine, lifestyle. The faulty lifetime will be corrected with behavioral modification. I start eating well at right time. I start sleeping well. I start behaving well. I start working well. There is a total satisfaction how yoga intervention can help us to modify, alter the behavior. And that behavior will help us to alter my lifestyle and live a healthy life, healthy living. The first of all, the diet. A healthy diet helps protect against malnutrition and diet-related non-communicable diseases such as diabetes, heart disease, stroke, and cancer. The adopt healthy diet practices. So the balanced calories in width, calories out, limit fat intake, shift from saturated and saturated fat, eliminate industrially product trans fats, limit sugars and salt intake are the, some of the dietary advisories we give in yoga. So this is the things what we Indians follow. So the quality of food, the quantity of food, the state of mind while eating, these are the three things we emphasize in yoga because it's not only the food, but the quantity what we eat, then the state of mind affects our metabolism and psychological states. Then in the cleansing, we uh, choose for the, uh, the nostril cleansing, the alternative nostril. So we need the, the frontal sinus should be always clean. So entire gastrointestinal tract, so the upper GIT and lower GIT, then the eyes, ears, and other organs, the sensory organs are being cleaned by various practices because so they are also having the impact on our meditation. Therefore, the most importantly, the respiratory organs, starting from the nostrils, so then the respiratory centers and the GIT gastrointestinal tract and the, the, the sensory organs are being cleansed up with a very clinical, uh, well-established procedures so that so I can practice asana, pranayama very effectively. So from the ancient time, Surya Namaskara, a 12 steps uh, yoga practice, which includes uh, the asanas, pranayama, and uh, the meditation. And uh, it is for vitality. So the daily practice of this 12 for uh, 10 to 15 minutes, so that will help us to gain vitality, power, wisdom, and uh, rightness and longevity. So I found many people in India live for 100 years by regularly practicing 12 Surya Namaskara in the early morning and following the proper Hinduism. In the ancient time, it has become the routine, the, the mode of life in the ancient Indian practice. So then we have a various asanas. We have a standing asanas. It is mentioned in our common yoga protocol. You might have practiced during the International Day of Yoga, then the sitting postures, then uh, we have a supine postures, we have a prone postures. So then uh, the whole thing is to the forward bending, the backward bending, the lateral bending, the twisting, the topsy-turvy postures, and also the relaxing postures. So every capsule of yoga can have this minimum six type of movements in terms of Shashankasana, in terms of Bhujangasana, or any asana you use according to the, the body conditions. But you must have a forward, backward, lateral, and twisting posture, including toxic away. So therefore, yoga asanas are to be integral part of our yoga regime. So I will mention here some of the researches, how yoga asana help for health and well-being. It activates the parasympathetic nervous system. So suppose I do asanas, the forward, backward, lateral twisting, it takes care of the entire the nervous system, the 
central nervous system and the autonomous nervous system expressly it activates the parasympathetic bringing the mind body to calm and relaxed state improve circulation detoxify the body tones up and revitalize the organs massage the joints stretch and relax the muscles and etc and optimize endocrine secretions so these are all the research findings i am putting it in a very uh, small capsules develops individual stamina promote internal awareness most importantly the yoga nidra or shavasana improves blood circulation and uh, help us in the management of uh, hypertension and also in the metabolic uh, disorders research uh, on shows regular practice of asanas helps in improving the physical activity metabolism muscular strength and endurance which internally focusing on the mental state helps in the prevention of uh, psychosomatic disorders lifestyle disorders like diabetes cardiovascular disorders etc so i have also given you some of the research papers published in your index journal for just to quantify and the how yoga asanas are helping us next important practice i mentioned is about pranayama there are number of pranayamas but most importantly the alternative nostril breathing the ratio we follow so accordingly that help us to our management of our thoughts the good yoga teacher will advise you the proper ratio and proper timing for yoga and proper practices pranayama always bring the lightness because it is in the vital seat so that makes your body and mind lighter and happy always so the regular practice of yoga or pranayama particularly the alternative nostril breathing and help us to reduce the stress and reduce the cortisol the number of cortisol which are called stress hormone it helps us to boost the immune system in the entire covid pandemic in various research studies conducted in india and abroad shows that yoga pranayama yogi pranayama technique help us to boost the immune system and reduce the cholesterol increase antioxidant protection the protection and enhance brain functions these are all some of the vital important benefits of pranayama shown in the research findings so uh, increases uh, serum prolactin and which is well being hormone it brings the steady and peaceful mind by practicing the pranayama because the breathing is associated with the autonomic nervous system which is related to the mental and emotional reactions so these are the some of the researches then this is my slide how pranayama connects the mind you said always i am talking about the uh, yoga is for mind management how i can manage the mind first of all the healthy body then the healthy breathing the lungs are healthy so therefore there is a regulated breathing practices asanas etc help me to breathe well the regulated breathing the management of left and right nostril breathing and keeps up our healthy functions of our lungs healthy lungs to the healthy heart functions healthy heart to the healthy vagus vagus is a no and which is of vital importance healthy yoga vagus function lead to awareness of prana the vital force which is at the higher level of consciousness but it's not in the body just like an electronic object so it is in the another sheet it is a higher sheet the prana to the mind it connects so this is the mind this is the prana this is the body these are the steps i shown in the panchakosha concept so the vital body so that connects with the prana so that is taken care in the practice of uh, pranayama therefore the sage patanjali mentioned why you do pranayama it is for the concentration so pranayama helps to concentrate therefore that's i bring this with my experience how i can connect my breathing to the prana prana to the mind the psychological aspects so to connect that the yogis has uh, developed some of the locks and some of the gestures to orient uh, to uh, regulate the breathing i mentioning some of the postures here which brings the steadiness of the mind 
So that steadiness of mind leads to the meditation or dhyana in Indian terminology. There are different sitting posture, there are different uh, meditation techniques across the globe. And in different religion also, they have been mentioned. If also in Indian continent, it's yoga meditation. That's the vipassana meditation, preksha meditation, jhan meditation, and various kinds of meditations are being practiced. But it's the right methodology as what for sustained concentration. So therefore, the mind is oriented. It's always calm and quiet and it is focused without any efforts. That is the power of meditation, which alter our behavior, which bring the modification in the behavior and lead us to the proper behavioral patterns. So these are the different uh, research papers published on the findings of meditation, increase in serotonin, the happy uh, neurotransmitter production, which influences the mood and behavior I mentioned. Meditation has also been associated with the increase in melatonin Melatonin availability, melatonin is also believed to be essential feelings of the happiness and well-being. And uh, most importantly, meditation enhances the GABA, gamma amino bitric acid production in the central nervous system, which improves cognitive performance and enhances uh, emotional regulations. So uh, it also longevity molecule, that is DHEA, it's a longevity molecule and stress counter puncture hormones in the body. So meditation provides the dramatic boost in the DHEA hormone levels. So these are all the wonderful practices. You can find more than 6,000 to 7,000 research paper published on the impact of meditation on various conditions and the mind management in the peer reviewed index journals that shows the importance of meditation, draw the attention of the scientist, especially the medical scientist. The meditation is the core of yoga, which is being practiced. Now, lastly, so I mentioned about various practices of you know, detoxification for the diet, how it works, my friends. So the Kriya, the cleansing practices, once we detoxify, the wonderful combination of asana, pranayama, dhyana, or meditation, even by the teacher, uh, Jadanko will definitely appreciate this. The teacher's job is to write combination of asana, pranayama, and dhyana. Once it is given, what happens? The three weeks or four weeks of regular practice, the balance, the endocrine secretions, and that brings the nervous coordination, increasing the mind-body coordination, when mind-body coordinate, what I think, what I act, action and thinking, and become one, that brings the calm, relax, and refresh. That brings the health and harmony, what I am uh, mentioning in the beginning. So now I come to a particular one thing. Nowadays, we're talking about the stress, and it has become the tool for many of the diseases. It has the, sister, the impact on the endocrine system, it has an impact on the immune system. It has impact on the nervous system. So therefore, disease manifestation happens like this. I have shown the so neurotransmitter level alteration and uh, cytokine level alteration, hormone level alteration, and that will continue. Prolonged stress will convert into a disease. So I am telling you, yoga works on stress. How it works? Uh, reduces the process of hypothalamo pituitary adrenal axis it is called HP axis. Stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system. Then the nervous system, the limbic system and the endocrine system in brain activate in rhythmic and relaxed manner. Reduce levels of stress, that is the cortisol levels reduced by the practice of yoga. During the meditation, a part of the brain called amygdala known for the processing of emotional stimuli show decreased activities. So meditation has balance our emotions, stimuli. The change in the amygdala was also correlated to a reduction in stress levels and regulate the emotions. Meditation has been shown to increase the serotonin production 
and enhances the GABA, as I mentioned already. So therefore, the alpha wave were more abundant in the posterior parts of the brain during the meditation, and they are the characteristics of wakeful rest. That's why I'm mentioning those who are practicing yoga. Yoga means the meditation properly. That is action in relaxation. I'm in the wakeful state. I'm working, but I'm relaxing. I'm stress is not affecting. That's the most important technology. So the world is beyond this technology to overcome the stress and its consequences and live well. So that's why particularly I mentioned how the scientific studies have shown the management of stress and its consequences and live well. Though <laughs> as shown in pictorial a representation of mind-body response during meditation and stress. So we worked with the famous uh, uh, neuroscience and uh, uh, psychiatric hospital called Nimans in India. And these are all some of the papers published in the peer reviewed index journals. So last, the slides one. My friend, I'm practicing yoga regularly for 40 minutes. Always I prefer 40 minutes practice of yoga minimum. So once I practice, I manage the stress, reduction of stress. The reduction of stress or management of stress or zero stress increases the mindfulness. The mindfulness increases the metabolism taken care of. So when metabolism taken care of, a sense of relaxation, and sense of relaxation will always lead to the positive health. I'm in the state of health and well-being both. That I consider as a positive health. So what are the silent features of a healthy individual? So always I'm active. Maybe somebody is lean, somebody is letting put on the weight. That's most, not most important. That's important, but most important is active and flexible body. The body is active because I'm doing pranayama. I'm drawing the energy from the air sources. So therefore, calm and quiet mind leads to positive thinking. So then control over emotions. We have positive emotions. Even in the positive emotions, I have balanced. Action and relaxation. I'm doing all the activities, but in the relaxed inner core of my personality. So when I'm doing all the activity in relaxed mood, always I'm in the state of happiness. I'm enjoying my eating. I'm enjoying my working. I'm enjoying my sleeping. Every minute I'm enjoying my life. The life is surrounded by pain and suffering, but I manage the entire suffering with my mind because mind is the cause for our happiness and pain. Yoga is for the mind management. Once I manage this mind, I will be in the state of happiness. I'll be in the state of bliss. I'm drawing the energy from the source, the spirit. That is the technology the yoga technology for the health and well-being, which leads to the effect. To promote this, we, our institute and Minister of Ayush has collaborated with the WHO, the World Health Body, and bring up the WHOM yoga app. You can download it in the Android or in the iPhone. So this is available where we are given the modules free of cost. You don't need to charge anything. Wonderful module and approved by more than 72 scientists have been engaged and approved this protocol and the app. So you can download it and make use of for yourself. So then we come up with a small, small break, five minutes back in the workplace to distress, refresh and refocus. All these modules or protocols we are bringing has been conducted a clinical trial in uh, multiple centers on the basis of the research we are bringing this type of small, small capsules. You don't need, and it is also available on the uh, both Android. Just Yoga Break app you will download and use it for your workplace to de stress, refresh, and refocus. So, just to mention about Muradi Desa National Institute of Yoga, it's a premier institute of yoga under the Ministry of uh, Ice Government of India, and it is for the uh, it is conducting many courses of uh, education, training, and therapy. And it's the nodal institute uh, in the International Day of Yoga. And uh, for your information, I'm so happy 
It is the only one yoga institution recognized by WHO as a collaborative center in traditional medicine yoga since 2013. We have come up with many of the booklets, standard booklets, protocols for various non-communicable diseases we brought in. So in that one, WHO collaborative centers that contributed to the WHO effort in promoting evidence-based yoga practice for managing non-communicable diseases, our institute, this collaborative center is contributing a, uh, a lot. We brought in a WHO bank mark training, various activities we brought in. So my friends, now as we said, government has established yoga certification board, the global certification. We come up with a very, some training, even the training can be given, yoga volunteer, 36 hours, well-designed training. We have a uh, videos, uh, online videos, free videos. So you can download them systematically. So 24 days, 36 hours, you can practice on your own and live well. That's the kind of training we are importing for the entire global community. So if you pay just $5 or $10, you'll get the certificate, self-certification, yes, undergone training of 36 hours. By watching these systematized videos, I want certified. You will get certification by the government of India as a yoga volunteer. So then if you want to become a teacher, so you can undergo some 200 hours that to teach protocol. You want to become a wellness instructor, 400 hours. You want to become a teacher and evaluator, 800 hours. You want to become a master of yoga, 1600 hours protocols are there. Once you do that, any yoga center in Croatia, if they apply as the part of our 70, 75 years of independence, we're giving it very consistent rates, almost well, one fifth of the total fees we're charging. Just for protocol, we're charging $10. For these things, only $25 or $50 we're charging just to manage for the examination. We are giving it free cost, free of cost, but the management of the examination, et cetera, we're charging. Why we are doing like this? Yoga is for the entire humanity. So our honorable prime minister, this is the key gift of our ancient yoga rishis, the sages who want to give to the entire world as much as possible. Therefore, standard the ancient Indian practices are put into the technology, apps and various post models and being given to the entire yoga world. That's why any organization in Croatia want to get accreditation by the yoga certification board, just go to the yoga certification board website. There is various kinds of accreditation, yoga center, yoga therapy center, yoga institution, leading yoga institution, etc. So then there are some uh, professional certifications are also uh, mentioned in the back. Then for your information, Honorable, uh, Honorable Times of India announced the uh, Yoga Awards, which carries 25 lakh rupees Indian currency for the international institution contributing for the uh, yoga. Even we uh, asked Jardenko to apply this year. We, we even uh, recommended those such type of the, uh, the uh, organizations in the world promoting and contributing for the development of yoga, Honorable Prime Minister is uh, identifying the internationally renowned yoga institution and internationally renowned yoga person each. And we are giving the award on the eve of International Day of Yoga. So that's the way how we are promoting. So therefore, make best use of all these initiatives of government of India to promote. And lastly, lastly, before I thank once again, the uh, Sri Jadanko Miklik and Honorable Ambassador, His Excellency Srivastava Sir, and all of you for your patience sharing. It is yoga for the entire humanity. The need of the hour is to develop it as a science. The physics, the chemistry, the social science, all are who has invented, nobody search for that, but they are for the entire humanity. Humanity, like this yoga is for the entire humanity. So there should not come the blockage or barriers of caste, kira, religion, nation, gender. No. Please, as a scientist, I'm telling, take it as a science. 
well established science but difference between the empirical science the the modern science and the yoga science is modern science are in the experimental yoga is experiential so this science has to be adopted as a culture as a behavioral modification pattern so that we can live well with these principles of yoga these practices of yoga will keep the entire humanity intact and it will help for the global health and well-being with these few words once again i thank all of you for your patience here jai namaste om shanti 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 thank you thank you thank you thank you very much dr keshwar baswara ji ji for your all comprehensive comprehensive um showing us the whole perspective of yoga covering all fields of life and all the benefits and connecting this with the ancient uh, and uh, very traditional hmm, presentation of yoga which was kept in india for thousands and thousands of years and combining with the most modern scientific research today and presenting this to the whole world on the scientific basis the benefits of yoga and uh, i am especially thankful to you because you spoke so much about the yoga therapy approach for the benefit for the common people how, how yoga can help for their health and that the the yoga is not a symptom uh, approach based symptom based approach but the person based approach so with yoga we are healing the person not the illness so our aim is not just one illness to remove but to cure the person it means to bring to the person memory about his true nature and uh, this gives also the we can say stress prevention because when we are removing ignorance about our life and when we realize that our true nature is that we are the the, the children of immortality that the fear is less and then this abhinivesha it means the fear of survival is less and in that sense uh, our autonomic nervous system will be more relaxed we will not react with the fight and flight when and feeling all the time in danger when we feel all the time fear and in danger then autonomic nervous system has no time to rest it is all the time creating big disturbance in our body and uh, we are losing a lot of energy and uh, leading us to the illness mental and physical so the yoga is stress preventive through the self realization and stress management through the deep relaxations to release the, the accumulated stress already and improve the health so thank you very much for all your wisdom and knowledge giving us in a short such a short time and i would like to ask uh, um his excellency rajkumar shivastava to to give us his final uh, blessing for this meeting thank you i was uh, listening to the presentation by uh, dr basvareddy and it was as usual a very in depth uh, detailed presentation of how yoga is beneficial and uh, i was just uh, wondering that uh, there is a language uh, of what you call management schools and there is a, also a need to highlight that uh, the yoga philosophy is taught in a different jargon in management school for example the emotional intelligence in emotional intelligence is talked about as the key for leadership today in the time when the change and complexities are increasing uh, you need a leader who has high degree of emotional intelligence and when you look at yoga philosophy and yoga how yoga helps i think it is synonymous to that jargon in the management language uh, and i would take it further that its spiritual uh, intelligence is also Uh, connected to that so emotional and spiritual intelligence comes 
through yoga, which basically means being empathetic to the society, to the surroundings, to the environment, as well as to yourself, to be self-aware, to be aware about your positive traits, to be aware about your lacunas. And you can only do it when you spend time with yourself. And I think that very uh, clearly came out in your presentation. So I think there is also a need that such kind of presentation could be connected uh, in future. Uh, and I'm sure you do it, but uh, we need to highlight that yoga is not a parallel ecosystem. It is the ecosystem uh, which is uh, taught in a different manner in Harvard Business School or other uh, big business school. So people do yoga, but they don't realize that they are doing yoga. So I'm very happy that uh, you did this presentation and since it has been recorded, so it will be available to those who could not attend today. Thank you. Thank you for your time and uh, hope to see you physically here. Thank you, sir. It's my pleasure. Thanks for wonderful uh, comments and also I'll take care. Uh, definitely it is for emotional intelligence. It's a very wonderful thing. In the management school, whenever we go, it's being emphasized, which is the need of your yes, Thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you very much, everybody present and uh, our dear guest, Dr. Ishwar Basavaraviji, our dear His Excellency Raj Kumar Srivastava, Ambassador of India, Croatia, and uh, enjoy the benefits of yoga practice every day. And this is the, the best time which we can spend. One uh, great master of uh, yoga, Maharishi Makesh Yogi, said that uh, spend time on asana and pranayama is the golden time of the day and meditation. So practice some meditation, asana, pranayama every day, and then the life is uh, beautiful. And we can make the, the, the ecology beautiful. So thank you very much again. Namaste. <laughs> Namaste.